Words like yours. Uh, over there. Exactly. It's very close. It's on the other side of the ridge. Okay. Um, so back um, during the French and Indian War, the British would come up from the south, from actually from Fort Edward on the Hudson, and they did the 12 mile port to the southern end of Lake George, and then they send scouts, Rogers Rangers. <coughs> up here, and then they'd come over the ridge, and they'd come to the top of this mountain. And the, the British were pulling sugar loaves, the French were pulling rattlesnake hill. And Rogers and his rangers would look down here onto the, uh, onto the peninsula and see what's going on. So in 1755, the French are going to build a fort right here to keep the British out of Lake Champlain. If they got onto Lake Champlain, 100 miles to the north, uh, they could come uh, into the St. Lawrence River. Um, they'd have access to Montreal, they'd have access to Quebec, take over the seats of government here in New France. So the French want to avoid that, so they're going to build this fort here. And the, the fort is, the, the peninsula is going to play a prominent role. Uh, part of both the French and Indian War and the beginning of the American Revolution. It's kind of funny because where it's situated, it is still today, it's in Philadelphia. Uh, but uh, it really did uh, uh, play a significant role. So the, the French, because of the two points of land being very close here, they could monitor all the traffic heading up the lake. And so obviously, uh, once they established the fort, and they established the guns, that's the main thing, establishing the cannon. So the, the cannon at the fort are going to be anywhere from 24 to, to 32 pounders. And so what that means is the, the solid iron ball that fires is going, to, is going to be 24 pounds. And a 24 pound cannon will fire that ball uh, about two and a half miles. And so from here, to the shore to the south is about a mile and a half. So in other words, if, if any boats did venture out onto the water in front of the fort, they'd be sunk in a matter of minutes. And so the, the French really hold, hold sway on the area because the British can either come up the southern end of Lake Champlain or they can come up Lake George and then portage down about two and a half miles to the the Chute River and then put it on the lower falls of the Chute, but that would just bring them out. Uh, it empties out into Lake Champlain pretty much right in front of the guns of the fort. So there, there's really no ability for the British to gain access to Champlain as long as the French hold and defend that fort. So that'll be a point of contention during the uh, French and Indian War. And the French are going to try, uh, excuse me, the British are going to try on a few different occasions to, to ultimately take that uh, fort. The, the, the major battle that takes place here is in 1758, when the British should have taken the fort. They, they outnumbered the uh, French uh, four to one. Uh, they had the manpower, they had the artillery, they just didn't bring the cannons into play. Uh, and they were frankly out, out maneuvered and, and uh, uh, by the, the French. And, and the French were very fortunate in that the, the British kind of played right into their hands. So, so what happens, you, you, you kind of wonder, well, how, how could this very large number of British, 17,000, and the French only have 3,800. How could the French hold off the British successfully? And, and there's, there's a lot of contributing factors. One of, the, one of the main factors is this. So there's a guy by the name of Howe, General George Augustus Howe, Lord Howe. Uh, and if the name Howe sounds familiar, he's got two younger brothers. One is General William Howe, the other is General, or excuse me, Admiral Richard Howe. And they both play uh, very important roles in the American Revolution. But, this is the eldest, George. 
Now, George is the second in command for the British with these 17,000 men. And George uh, is, a, is, a, um, is a great military leader, he's a great strategist, and probably, probably would have defeated the French. Uh, he's, he's on a par with uh, the expertise of Montcalm, who was the French Unfortunately, General Howe is killed two days before this huge battle. And so it devolves back to a guy by the name of Abercrombie. And Abercrombie, uh, he's very good at logistics. He can move thousands of troops and, and all of their provisions, hundreds of miles. Uh, so he's very good at logistics. If you're alive today, he'd probably be the CEO of UPS or FedEx. But militarily, not so much. Uh, so Howe is killed, and it devolves to Abercrombie. And so Abercrombie is simply going to use the fact that he has four times as many troops, and he's just going to try to overpower and manhandle the French. Well, that's not going to work, because the French are going to build fortifications that really put the British at a disadvantage. So, so I told you that way across the peninsula, from the Lachute River on this side, to Lake Champlain to the north, they dig an entrenchment of a half a mile across the peninsula. And then they cut down the trees down below. And they build a walk wall right behind the entrenchment, a quarter mile long. Now this wall is is basically in an arc. So it's not a straight line, it's in an it's in an arc. It's actually a zigzag fish. So you can get multiple lines of fire. You get what we call infillet. And so the the French are going to build this wall. And then they're going to cut down the rest of the forested area down below and build this abatte. So this abatte is treetops limbs and branches sharp and pointing toward the enemy. It's similar to 18th century barbed wire. So, you've got this log wall, quarter mile. And then you've got this entrenchment. And then you've got 50 yards of open ground, half a football field wide. Okay, absolutely no cover for the British. And then you've got this tangle of branches, which is also 50 yards wide. And it runs the entire length of the wall, so it's a quarter mile as well. All right. Now, how is killed? Abercrombie now is leading these 17,000 troops. He leads them down the portage. He comes out onto the peninsula. He doesn't bring his cannons. He doesn't bring his artillery. He does bring the artillery up from Lake George, up from Fort George, but he doesn't bring them down to the battlefield. The reason he doesn't do that, it's going to take two or three days to get all these big guns in place. And he doesn't want to waste that time. He outnumbers the French right now. He wants to take advantage of that. He hears that the French